let's look at this one on the bill dear africans the more you hate nigerians the more they thrive all right the more you hate nigerians the more they thrive this editorial is based on in a summarized form all right my people let's fire some spunky new exclusive right here this evening right here on this channel all right it's it's quite a brief one it's going to be brief precise concise on this pan-african channel and as usual i am tj you can call me Olua TJ, you can call me Emeka, you can call me, you know, Fall Out Rain as given to me by my Niger people. If this is your first time on this channel, it's a Pan-African channel and we are pushing a Pan-African stance. All right. I'm not basically saying that we need majority of, you know, oh no, we need all 100% of Africans to think and act like Pan-Africans with one mindset of supporting each other. But if we are able to basically get majority 80 percent to 90 percent of people who believe in it that we can push a narrative here. enough of the bluffing and blabbing let's do what is the what is needed all right the topic it's more of common sense as sometimes i do editorials based on facts and figures those who are on this channel know that but let's look at this one on the bill dear africans the more you hate nigerians the more they thrive all right the more you hate nigerians the more they thrive this editorial is based on in a summarized form all right the whole of last week in the last uh, basically week of la uh, last month of august all right through to the first week of september issues that has gone on within the african space and most of the african news when it comes to the entertainment when it comes to hate when it comes to complaints are uh, you know channeled towards nigerians it's either other african countries are channeling hate and complaints towards Nigerians. And it's quite interesting to know that it is happening within our space. I basically want us to look at it holistically and then address it accordingly. All right, so Nigerians are on a trajectory of, you know, global dominance and projecting Africa the most. When we look at Africa, if you look at basically movie, entertainment, anything, basically a lot, of the endeavors in Africa, Nigerians are projecting Africa the most. And relatively, any human being who is able to achieve a lot of successes are seen as, you know, people see him to be, you know, an on and off kind of achievement. People complain a lot. You know, people find them too known and, and self-centered. That is how people see them. But any like-minded, educated, open-minded person sees that person as a go-getter as a go-to person where you can ask questions for example the world elites the world richest person let, let's major on africa since we are dealing with africa dangote and the likes all right in africa recently we've seen statistics wise one south african who they are claiming is now the african whatever you go into it i don't want to go into details about it but you see the more you keep winning the more you get a lot of hate now, it is unlikely that other Africans are not getting it right when it comes to the complaints and the hate. First and foremost, let's take our minds back to the previous xenophobic act which, which popped up in South Africa. All right. It was, it, it was targeted uh, towards Nigerians. Nigerians were the mainstay of the xenophobic act, which later on other nationals had their own share of the attacks. But the most you know, targeted ones were Nigerians because when you go to South Africa, Nigerians are doing a lot there. On the other hand, South Africans are claiming Nigerians are infiltrating their economy and then they are thieves, they are, you know, they are, they are scammers and all these things. But South Africa, do you look at your country and you look at your economy and then relatively, don't you see responsible Nigerians, all right, who are doing best or better for themselves by adding up to your country or to the you know economic economical development or economic development of your country so it is like when 99.9 percent .9 all right of nigerians are doing well the 0.1 percent who are you know probably you see as the deviant ones and the truant ones i'm not saying 
for a fact that is the case you use it as a case study to summarize the whole 99 percent as nigerians and the emphasis are always on nigerians all right so south africans are hating nigerians for just the pity part of what they call scum which we don't even have evidence and cases to when you talk about criminality in africa south africa in the world not only in africa your country has the most cases of criminality robbery and gang thievery and all these things gang lifestyle you've left that one they're talking about nigerians who are doing their most who are raking in business and making business opportunities in your country for you citizens to come and say nigerians should not come to you, your country they should stay in their country and do well for themselves then it means that you don't even know what you guys are saying why are you not sacking other nationals people like the mozambicans why are you not sacking you know the Botswanians? why are you not sacking zambians from your country because they are not a threat to you they are not a threat to your cause right all right you can manipulate them but because you cannot manipulate nigerians you turn that kind of you know ideology into hate and complaint We've had enough of the bold thing, so I don't even want to go into it and explain. It wasn't like Nigerians caused it. You caused it and you are turning around to blame Nigerians for being scammers and thieves. Meanwhile, you have a whole lot of your nationals indulging in criminal activities, which in the whole world, your country is ranked with the highest cases of criminali criminality that we are not talking about it. Let's move on, fast forward, away from, you know, you know, South Africa and major and other African countries like Liberia complaining about who started Gerard Pino and other things complaining also about them playing Nigerian songs and Nigerians not reciprocated. It is not done that way. You cannot project what you don't know. You cannot play a song you don't know. You cannot talk about what you don't know. So Liberians also, when you want your artists to be, you know, looked at, tell them to project their song, let the songs be out there, and Nigerians will hear it. So far as the song is classic, quality, and standard, uh, they, will, they, they themselves will add it, add up. And mind you, if Nigerians add up to your song, your song goes global. Because it's being pushed in the country of Nigeria. Nigerians in the diaspora hear of it. They are fellow friends within the white space or foreign countries hear of it, and it goes haywire everywhere. All right? just by being on a stage with Bernard Boy, all right, has projected artists who throng and be part of Bernard Boy's show, that alone gives them that marketing impetus to their daily or their day-to-day -day activities or their endeavor at which they are pursuing. So the name Nigeria and the products they are selling and they are pushing out there, when I'm talking about the products, be it movies, be it their actors, be it their musicians, whatever, all right, it's a buzz around the world. And when you associate with them, you get a marketing appeal in the world. So the more you complain, the more they win because you are complain you you are using your time to complain rather than pushing your artists for Nigerians to hear, hear them songs, um, the, their songs, sorry, and project it. So basically, some of these narratives are neither here nor there. It's just it's just normal and the usual rants and bants with no facts. All right, so that is from Liberia. My country has had its own fair share of the complaints, and sometimes we call it hate, where we're trying to claim, you know, dominion over high life, where we know that high life is, is scattered all over, you know, West Africa for that matter. Liberians have their high life, you know. Nigerians have their high life, all right? The, the only thing is that Ghanaians were, major, were majoring on high life in the past, in the 50s, in the 60s, all right? And we wanted to lay claim to it. High life has its roots on the shores of Liberia and Sierra Leone too. All right. So Sierra Leoneans are complaining about Gerald Pino. Liberians are also complaining about their songs or Nigerians not promoting their songs. You are promoting Nigerians and playing Nigerian songs in your country because it's well marketed. Not only well marketed, you love the songs and you can jump to it. So fast forward, even my country has had this first year where we were trying to claim high life and saying that Afrofusion and Afrobeat Felakuti or the originator of it, Felakuti was in Ghana to learn from our legends. We've had sources and other Ghanaians say otherwise. All right. 
Okay, so I'm not going to go into that. But our own legend, J.W. Ambele, has expounded on the fact that we need to find our original identity before we can thrive over there. That is not what I'm here discussing. I am discussing the fact that anyone who wants to lay claim to the Nigerian dominancy and the dominance of Nigerians needs to sit down and understand that that energy you are using to complain and hate on them, you need that energy to market and that time to market yourself because the more you complain, the more they thrive. Why? It is because they are not focused and fixated on you. They are focused on their mission and their mandate and they keep doing it. It is in no mere fluke that Nigerians are a bit agitated when the likes of Flavor and Burner Boy says that they are African artists. In a common sense, it is true, but in a nutshell, Nigerians and citizens of Nigerians feel that no matter what we've done for these African countries, these African, you know, for the African sub-Saharan region, we are still being treated like aliens in our own continent. So we prefer our artists to align themselves with Nigeria and push it. And if other Africans want to join, they are free, they can, they are, they are free to join, sorry. So it hurts them sometimes, although they know that, yes, they are African artists, but they don't want it in that way because other Africans do not give them the same semblance as respect they need or the artists and the name Nigeria accords them with because they are on the waves, all right? They are on the waves. They, they defend their artists, so they know the kind of feedback other Africans are giving back, all right? But in all, we cannot also say that all Africans are hateful and complain about Nigerians. I know that you know. I know in your very own home. Let me address my people directly. If you're Nigerian, you know, you know, this national from Ghana who loves Nigeria, talks very good of Nigeria, defends Nigeria with his, with his will. And you know some, you may be some in Cote d'Ivoire, wherever, who defends Nigeria. In that same vein, you can also have other African nationals who are also talking ill about Nigeria, even though, whereas they've received a lot of feedback and love from my Niger people. So we need to understand that you are complaining and hating people who are positive-minded and they are pursuing their goal. And the Bible says God helps those who help themselves. And so far as they are helping themselves even much more better, God's blessings in addition help them to thrive a lot more better. And it's as simple as A, B, C, D. Sometimes common sense should work because should work because when you leave the, the, the facts before them, they try to punch holes into the facts you are, you are sharing to suit them. Although the facts should remain the same. If you follow me on this channel, I read articles, I read Davis to back up whatever podcast I do. But sometimes we need to put it outside and then address our people in Africa with common sense to tell them that the more you hate and complain about Nigerians, the more they are going to thrive. I don't know if you agree with me. All right. I try as much to make the editorials brief, precise and concise, unlike other contents on this channel. All right. So let me leave it here. All right. And it's a message. It's just a message to my other African nationals that the more you hate on Nigerians, the more you complain, the more they thrive or the more they are going to thrive. Why? Because they are focused and fixated on their goal. Nigerians are not the usual, Af they don't have the usual African mindset. They are go-getters. They don't like to be ordered around. You don't just order them around. It's impossible. They always, they also want to achieve something. All right. All right. So I, I, if you disagree with me, this is a channel where I've been telling you, you can share your thoughts with me, even if you disagree. And if you agree, share your thoughts with me as well. I am pushing uh, an agenda and a motive and a positive one, which I know from start is going to be difficult for other people to understand. But going forward, people will understand me that I have, I have, I have you know, I've sacrificed myself you know, to stay fixated on the truth, no matter where it's coming from. I defend what is the truth. Even if my Ghana people mess up, I say it as it is. And that is what I do, all right? It's a Pan-African stance, and I have the Pan-African mindset, all right? I am a loyalist of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, who himself was a Pan-Africanist, but, so, but was pulled down by his people. We are here. We are staying fixated for Africa and whoever is pushing Africa out there. Shout outs to my Niger people. The more they complain, my people thrive. The complaints and hate will come. You will not have all people loving you. The Bible has even said that, all right, that if everybody loves you, you date trouble inside. So it's normal. 
Let them complain while you thrive. We will be here on this channel and somebody like me, I'm going to spawn and project the fact that you are winning and you are projecting Africa to the utmost that Africa deserves. And basically, precisely Nigeria, you are projecting Nigeria out there. I am TJ. I'm a Pan-Africanist. You can call me Olua TJ. I make a following as given to me by my Niger people. I'll be coming your way with more tomorrow on the Pan-African stance. I salute you and peace out. Oh, oh, oh.